Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to be focusing on the tram and getting it running on our elevated tram line. So as you'll probably know, last video we focused on the marina tram stop, and that's at one extreme end of the raised tram system. And since we're way off finishing the far end of the tram system, I've uh, put in a temporary stop here. That's why it looks so unfinished and there isn't a platform and so on, because it's temporary just so we can get the tram actually going, because we need one of these pieces at each end in order to send it back on its way to where it came from. So excuse this for not looking very glossy, but I think it's more important that we focus on the tram now and get it moving. Right, well, we've done the station, now for the tram. I won't go into as much building detail of this because it will take us uh, far too long. But suffice to say, to do this tram, you'll need several ingredients. You'll need the basic tram from the set 60097 from 2015, which is the city square set. You'll also need a set of monorail bases which you should have as part of your monorail system. And this being the engine piece with that switch we talked about. You'll also need two power functions light sets. That's 8870. One short extension cable for power functions. That's 8886. And one, if you're like me, using a rechargeable battery box, one of those. 8878, though obviously you can use the regular battery box, but um, I think it's got less consistent power output over a long period of time, So, and it's arguably a lot less green, so uh, I use the rechargeable ones, though I appreciate they are a, a lot more uh, of a financial outlay. So put together, that gives us this set. The things I've done differently, you'll see at the front, we've got the regular sort of passenger setup, albeit with this cable going all the way through. Whereas on the back, we've got the battery box and only standing room along the sides. Now I've put these passengers on both sides standing to shield as much of the view of the battery box as we can. And I think you'll agree when the glasses down and when it's moving around you're you know not confronted with that too much um, and we've got a driver in each end and that's necessary because it will be going in both directions to and fro and that's the reason why we've got so many pantographs on the top because usually there's one in the middle with the standard set but I wanted to have one going each direction for when it's going forward or backwards and obviously it looks a bit asymmetrical when you've got the money on the front or only on the back so I did both. The last thing I've done is for this bicycle transport area in the middle I've actually added a bicycle which actually shields the view of the motor to a degree as well and I've got a different colored bike uh, in the azure blue on the other side. So we can't do much about the messy cables but they are necessary we could just have one going to the motor because power functions will connect to uh, an old uh, monorail motor no problem whatsoever uh, but the rest is required so we can have lights in both ends and they're on all the time the battery switch is on which reminds us that it's on so we have to turn it off before we leave the Lego room and that also means that the motor is available for use. Now with all these wires and so on it is a little bit flimsy because we've got for example an area on this uh, midsection where the wire actually gets passed straight through this um, by way of a panel piece rather than a brick piece so it's not the most sturdy thing but once it's in position on the rails then it's absolutely fine. And I think you'll agree, 
looks rather swish. And very much like the real trams that go around real life Nottingham, albeit the colour's completely different. So I suggest we take this up, put it on the tram line, now we've got a tram stop in position, and get going. Okay, so we're back in the Lego room. Let's get this tram on the tracks. Now it's quite fiddly to do, because you've got to make sure all three elements... Oh, I made it look easy. Got to make sure all three elements are properly combined with the track, and it's quite sturdy. I'm still not 100% sure about having four pantographs on the top. It looks a little busy, but then I do like things busy, so I don't know. Tell me what you think. Right, I won't set this going immediately from this angle because I think I'm going to have to go handheld uh, so we can get the full journey in shot. But while we're here, we may as well switch it on. Just need to flip one of those up, press the button and down. Hopefully you can see the lights on. Probably can't, but anyway, they are on. Now I warn you, I am awful at doing handheld shots because I am very wobbly it seems, but here goes. Right, we'll make this the last pass on handheld. Quickly, need to change the station to stop, and it stops. Hey, that was good fun. So this is the wide angle. I love the way it vanishes in between the buildings. And then pops out in all the gaps. That looks really, really good. You can see it struggles a little bit to get up the hills, but um, it copes fine. Also, it goes a little faster on the downhills. And I'm really glad I took the effort to put the headlights on because I think they really help it pop. Right, I think the next thing to try is tram cam. Now I think it's also really important that we also get the first person perspective of the driver of the tram. And that will mean attaching my small GoPro style camera to the front, which is easier said than done. Um, and because of the tolerances 
of the buildings, i.e. they're really, really close to the tram track, which is the way I like it, there isn't even room to do landscape pictures. So I'm going to have to mount it vertically like that to the front. And then we can take pictures going one way around and from the other way around. So I want the method of attaching the tram cam to the tram being very simple because I want to be able to do it very quickly and easily so I can often do a tram's perspective every time I do something that uh, the tram can see. So it's important that this is a quick process that doesn't require me to take apart the entire tram and so on. So if I just pull off the windscreen, then I can detach the little light setup from the front and then remove the entire front in one piece. And if I remove two of these tiles as well, then I need a rig to attach my camera to. That's what I've made here. Just some panel pieces on jumpers, all in random colors because it's not important. It's not going to be seen. And it's just done that way because that's the perfect size to grip onto my camera. So I will attach that to the front of the tram. And that will enable us to film. And then if I just flip the tram 180 degrees after doing some filming, then we can have it from the perspective of the other driver going the other way. Right, let's go with tram cam. Well, I think you'll agree that that's been a fantastic success and this looks absolutely awesome. As always, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And we'll see you next time on Robin Hood Bricks. When hopefully will be starting the Brick Nottingham Castle. See you next time!